everyone. In this video, I'm going to be showing step four of our Zentangle project. So this will be adding watercolor to your entire paper. If you do have some teeny tiny details that you feel like the watercolor would spread too far and maybe go outside of the lines, you could use a little bit of colored pencil, um, but do not use any washable markers because those will mix with the watercolors. So to start out with, the first thing you want to do is get a brush wet. Depending on what part of your painting you're painting, you might need a bigger or smaller brush. Typically with watercolor, you're going to use pretty small brushes. You're going to dip your paintbrush bristles into the water and then get rid of any excess water. You don't want a lot left on there. And then for your color scheme, you need to think about what colors you want where. So if I do red, orange, and yellow in my turtle, I would want to do those colors first and then do my green, blue, purple in the background or vice versa. Um, I think I'm going to do my background first. If I want a dark green, I'm only going to use a little bit of water. So that will make a pretty dark color. I just use the newspaper to kind of test it out. Um, these get thrown away at the end. They're just to help cover your table. So if I want a lighter green, I'm going to add more water. So I just dip it a few times to kind of make that paint a little bit more watery and that will make a lighter green, so more of a watery green. So it's up to you, it kind of depends what you want it to look like. Watercolor is also nice because you can layer the colors. So you can blend and mix. You want to make sure on the color wheel you're picking colors that are next to each other though. If you go across, so like on the color wheel, green is across from orange, that's going to make kind of a murky brown color. So you want to try to avoid mixing colors that are opposites on the color wheel. So be thinking about that when you're doing your painting. If I do a green section here, if I need to do orange on my turtle head, I'm going to wait and do that after this paint has dried. It only takes a few minutes to dry though. So if I just do my background first, most of it will kind of dry as I'm painting it. And then I could still continue on to my turtle. So if I want to, mix this or layer. If I want to layer this with a color next to green on the color wheel, I could do blue or yellow. So I'm going to do blue. Again, I just test it on the newspaper first to see how dark it is. And then I can layer that on there. And this is going to make kind of like a blue green or a teal. Um, watercolors dry quickly. So your brush is also going to get pretty dry pretty fast. So you just have to keep dipping your brush in the water back in the paint over and over again. Um, just make sure you don't get too much of the water on there because it can rip your paper if you press too hard. So I'm just gently spreading that out. They tend to look better after they dry. So as long as, you, as you've layered that on top, they'll kind of blend together and spread as it dries. So I'm going to continue on with the rest of my background and then I will do the turtle part with different colors. I'm done with the background painting of my Zentangle project. So I just blended a bunch of green, blues, and purples together um, in different sections. So notice I didn't really blend any green and purple together since they're not next to each other on the color wheel. I mostly stuck with either greens and blues or blues and purples if I was mixing any colors. I'm expecting that somewhere on your project you find one place at least to try and mix and layer some colors. You also might need to go back and add a second layer to make those colors darker and brighter. Watercolors tend to work best if you do light layers instead of trying to add a bunch at once. So you can let this dry a little bit and then add more colors. While my outside is drying, I'm going to go ahead and start on the inside of my turtle and then work my way to the edges. Um, that way, by the time I get to the fins and head and tail, hopefully these colors will be pretty much dry so it's safe to go ahead and paint those with my red, orange, and yellows. All right, so my last color I'm gonna add is red. Um, red's a good color to kind of show you the difference between using a lot of water and just a little bit. So I'm gonna start making a dark red. 
So I'm going to only have just a drop of water on my brush, hardly any at all. And then I'm going to get just mainly paint with only a little bit of water. And this will make a really dark red or really bright red, depending on how you want to look at it. All right, now if I add more water, so I add some more drops of water using my brush, then this is gonna make a light red, which will look pretty much pink because light red is pink. So this kind of shows you the difference. If you want lighter colors, that's fine. Um, you'll just add more water to make it lighter. If you want a darker, more bright color, then you only use a tiny bit of water and use mostly paint. You can also go back and add another layer to make it darker. So for example, on this one, I started out with a pretty dark layer. So I may not need to go back and add a second layer later. But on my other fin that I started over here, this is too light. I want it to be red red, not a pink. So I could go back and add another layer, especially since this is pretty much dry already. And that way I can make a darker red by adding another layer if my first one turned out to be a little bit too light after it dried. Watercolors tend to look lighter after they dry, so sometimes it helps the second day you're painting to go back and add another layer if you notice they ended up being lighter than you wanted. I'm done painting with all my watercolors. Um, one thing I want to mention is that if you mess up, make sure you have either a tissue or a paper towel or something nearby. You can always dab up any mess ups and then once it's dry, paint over it and it should get covered up fairly well. Um, Yellow is not going to cover up much because it's too light, but sometimes you can cover up things with darker colors. Keep in mind when you're doing your color scheme, it does not have to be realistic colors. So my turtle is red, orange, and yellow instead of mostly green. And I just picked cool colors for my background and warm colors for inside my animal. You could do it vice versa. You don't have to use all of the colors, it's up to you. I do need to see that somewhere on your paper you have tried to blend or mix two colors. So for example, this was a green and a blue, this was a blue and a purple. You just need at least one spot for an M that you have mixed two colors. If you have more than one spot, that would help you get to the E level for the painting part of the project. Make sure that you paint everything in. If there are tiny details you need to use colored pencils, that's fine, but you should not be using any markers because they will mess up your drawing that you did with Sharpie. So make sure you're doing watercolors after you finish with Sharpie. Do not use any markers. After you're done painting with watercolor, make sure you wash your brush, put back your supplies where they came from, newspaper can go in the garbage, and you will very carefully pick up your painting with two hands and carry it to the drying rack. After those are dry, then they will be passed back to you next class to work on again, um, or if you're done, then they will get turned in. So make sure that your name and homeroom is on the back of your paper so that you get it back next class. Otherwise, we don't know who it belongs to or what homeroom it even belongs to. So make sure your name and homeroom is on there. Have fun painting.